deeper. Okay. Uh, there is an Appendix A that only deals with high school. And basically, high school is done by conceptual categories. It is not done by courses. So you have two pathways you can go. The traditional, the Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, or the integrated way you're incorporating all of those three into Math 1, Math 2, and Math 3. In terms of the eight mathematical practices, these overarching habits, there's two of them, perseverance and precision. And when we present to the school, to the teachers and we're working with the teachers, basically these eight mathematical practices can apply to any subject area. Um, there's a lot of information given as to what they mean. So these are just kind of the synopsis of it. But there's a real big emphasis on reasoning and explaining, being able to justify your answer. How did you get to it? Being able to explain it and in detail and defend it and also criticize the logic of others. Modeling and using tools is critical and then also being able to see the structure and the generalizing of the different um, areas that you're looking at. Being able to apply concepts, the correct concepts into what, where the application belongs. Another key thing that um, I just want to go back to really quickly is in terms of English language arts, it doesn't talk about um, in English learners, but in November of 2012, the state um, adopted new standards for English language learners, and they are directly aligned with the English language arts um, standards. So they really are... Um, they really mesh well, and they will actually be easier for teachers to incorporate them. So that's a separate document um, that, the dis that the state just recently came out with. So the six major shifts for math. So there's really this sense of really focusing on specific concepts and going much deeper and prioritizing what those are. There's a more of a sense of coherence within and across the grades, so they really carefully looked at the domains of where they should be taught and how they build on one another. There's more of an emphasis on fluency with calculations, so you have that precision. The concept of really deep understanding of math concepts. Why are you doing this? Really understanding what it means. What they were finding was students could use a formula, but they didn't know why. They had no sense of when you use that formula or why you use it or how you even get to what you come out with. So there's a real shift to the math concepts, um, really understanding them. And then being able to apply the appropriate concept. And there's what's really come out is now that there's a dual intensity between really practicing and really understanding, that they both have to be simultaneous and they both have to be equal. So as we had an example of the challenge around technology, as we've been training teachers, that's probably the one area that's caused the most anxiety. You know, first around having the technology, having the, the devices. But technology is not just about devices, it's really about learning. How do we use technology as a tool to support the learning? So I know that Dr. Lawrence is going to be bringing back a report, a proposal from the Technology Advisory Committee around our Measure C, uh, how are we going to be able to provide for that? And of course, we will be looking at the training uh, that will be absolutely critical in terms of how we embed uh, the technology. So coming back to, it is not, they're not standalone, it's not a standalone subject. They're not even standalone standards. They are embedded in the Common Core State Standards. Um, skills are taught and they're part of what's needed as part of the classroom inquiry process. So as Helena mentioned is that, you know, we want students to be developing understanding. We want students to be asking questions. We want students to be look, finding evidence and be able to justify. So these are technologies going to provide tools for them to be able to do the research, uh, collaborate, you know, across, you know, either the school, across the state, across the country. Um, and the emphasis is also publishing and sharing. So again, the collaborative work, doing the research together, publishing and sharing and, and teaching each other. Um, 
sharing work with not just students, but also parents, so that parents have an opportunity to see the level of understanding students are achieving. Uh, tools such as some of you are familiar with, blogs, wikis, podcasts, video websites, and, uh, and, and more. And we know, we have seen it in classrooms across the country, across the world, that even little kids at first grade can pre create podcasts, you know, and it's, very, it's, it's intuitive for them. But the thing is that how do we tie that into the learning that's going on in the classroom? So we're very you know, cautious as we move into the technology piece is that again, it's not about acquiring stuff and it's not about acquiring devices. Is that how it is it authentically supporting learning? Okay. All right, so just a little bit more around what students would be able to do, to do produce and publish Documents we talk a lot about in the English language arts common core standards a real emphasis on on writing and so you know being able to produce and share um, And also working together collaborate. How do you create products together? Uh, communicating using web tools, you know, I know that most of our students are probably much farther along than I am You know around some of the web tools, social media and all of that that's around and how do they how do they use those tools to be able to support their learning and then knowing how to evaluate information. So because you go on the internet, you know, what are the sources? You know, how valid is the information you're getting out there? There is so much. So that we want students to be critical thinkers to be able to evaluate what information is valid that's out there and be able to make those discrimination and use them properly. Okay, Marie's going to talk a little bit about the new generation science standards. So here's a timeline um, for the next generation science standards and um, in January of this year the second draft of the standards was released for public input and that window closed at the end of January and now in March the, um, the final draft will be released and there'll be several meetings and then in July the uh, state superintendent, uh, Tom Torlakson, will recommend the science standards to the State Board of Education. And in November, the State Board will do one of three things. They'll either adopt them, reject them, or modify them. And depending on what they do, we could begin implementation of the next generation science standards in uh, 2014. And, and I have three slides, and this is a huge topic, so I'm just giving you like a little trailer here. Uh, shifts in teaching and learning of science. Um, they favor depth and coherence over breadth and coverage. Um, they focus on connecting simpler explanations to sophisticated ideas using evidence. And um, they make connections between the disciplines. They... Um, under performance, uh, to meet the performance expectations, um, the curriculum materials need to do more than present and assess content. Curriculum needs to involve the learners in developing and using and revising scientific ideas. And they need to stress what students can do with knowledge, not memorized knowledge. And under um, Correlation to the Common Core, each science standard is correlated to the cognitive demands of both the ELA and the math Common Core standards. Um, and that's also noted in the individual science standards. They say exactly where they're aligned. And the literacy standards do not replace the science standards. They supplement them. And uh, student discourse, reason, thinking, and argument from evidence overlap ELA, math, and the science standards. So there is a lot of work to do, and it's uh, all up there. It's, it's similar to what we're doing with the Common Core now. I, I do want to take this time to tell you a little bit about the uh, Integrated Middle School Science Project. That is a, a partnership that we're involved with, with Alameda County Office of Education and Cal State University East Bay. And we currently have five of our middle school teachers participating in this program where they meet with other teachers from other districts across counties 
and they work with um, scientists.